The Galaxy S21 Ultra was one of Samsung's most expensive flagship phones in 2021. Two years on, and this one hasn't fared well. The screen is busted to a point that it only shows two green bars, the back is cracked, and a camera lens too. With it being such a high-end phone, I think it's worth fixing. I purchased it in its current condition. It arrived loosely packed inside this odd box. To get inside this Galaxy S21 Ultra, we first need to heat up the cracked glass, and for this, I'll use a heat plate. From there, we can proceed on removing the glass. Using a suction cup will help in the separation and allow for a plastic pick to be inserted. As our glass is already cracked, it's likely to break more as we remove it. So it's important to wear gloves and glasses throughout this part. Once the back panel is free, we can get our first look inside the Galaxy S21 Ultra. It looks very similar to the regular S21 phones, only with a larger camera array. We'll continue the disassembly by removing the wireless charging coil. As we have to replace the display, which already comes attached with a new frame, we'll need to remove most of the internals so that we can transfer them over to the new display assembly. With the battery disconnected, we can then remove the earpiece speaker. Just because this phone is advertised with water and dust resistance doesn't mean it won't enter the device. This earpiece speaker is almost clogged with what looks like sand. Now while the rubber gasket stopped it from entering further, it could still affect speaker quality. So we'll clean it using a brush and some air. Proceeding, it's time to work on getting the motherboard out. All that's holding it in place is one screw and the cables attaching to it. This motherboard is packing Qualcomm's Snapdragon 888 processor with 12 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Back inside the phone, we can remove the front camera, which is secured using some glue. I like to use a sharp blade to cut through it, of course making sure not to cut its flex cable in the process. What I didn't know when I purchased this phone is that this is a US model. I can tell this as it has two extra 5G antennas for 5G millimeter wave, something not present on the international model. This also means this phone doesn't use Samsung's own processor, rather one from Qualcomm. Down at the bottom, the speaker is proving stubborn. After its screws are removed, it's still held in place with very strong clips. But once you find the right spot to pry, it comes out. Underneath is two flex cables, followed by three screws securing the charging port in place. The last thing left inside is the battery. We'll need to use a combination of heat, prying tools, a suction cup, and alcohol to get it free, because it's held in with a significant amount of adhesive. If you're facing difficulty, you may need some alcohol. The phone too. With the battery removed, we can see it has a capacity of around 5,000 milliamp hours. It's fascinating to see how much capacity they can squeeze into phones today. But we've now successfully removed all of the internals to the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Every screw we undid was the same sized Phillips head screw, which is going to make our reassembly process really straightforward. Of course, we're going to need a new display to assemble our parts onto. I've opted for a silver one as it was significantly cheaper than the black version for some odd reason. It comes with a few small parts inside, including the vibration motor and an antenna, but the rest will have to come from our old phone. For the battery, I'll be reusing the old adhesive as even after being used before, it's still plenty strong enough. The adhesive is so strong, even Samsung's official repair program won't sell you a new battery or a display without the battery already attached. Likely, as they don't want anyone puncturing it, trying to get it out. What that really means is even Samsung knows they're using too much adhesive to secure the battery. After the charge port and speaker has been installed, it's time for the 5G antennas before we move up to the top section of the phone and install the front-facing camera. 
I'll apply some liquid adhesive on both sides, just like what was done originally. This should prevent the camera from moving around. Next to go in is the motherboard. It simply drops into place and is secured with one Phillips head screw. We of course can't forget to connect all of the flex cables going to various portions of the phone. Then we can attach the earpiece speaker and its two flex cables. The phone is almost ready to test, but I first need to connect the battery and the wireless charging module before we do so. On some Samsung models, if you don't attach the wireless charging coil, the phone will not charge. This is because it houses a temperature sensor for the battery. Plugging this Galaxy S21 Ultra in, you can see it's charged up fine. So will it turn on? It boots up, but it's locked with a passcode. So we're going to need to reset the phone and set it up from factory settings. And we're in. But there's an issue. The phone isn't getting any service, with or without a SIM. Instead, there's a cross in the status bar. It took me a while to discover the issue. It's one so easy to make, especially if you purchased a phone with an unknown history. The US model of phone uses a different antenna. When you take the antenna out, you can see it's marked for a G998B, better known as the international model. I'll need to harvest the old antenna from the broken screen to resolve this issue. You can see it's marked as G998U, which is the US specific model. It doesn't look any different, but it is. This issue does extend to other parts too, like the cameras. So when ordering parts, make sure you buy them for the correct model. Usually when I come across replacement parts not working, it's the manufacturer trying to stop you from fixing something. But in this case, it's incompatibility between the models. With the antenna swapped, it's time to get the phone back together for another test. This time the phone has network connectivity and we're able to make and receive phone calls. With everything back inside the phone, the last thing we need to do is reinstall the back cover. But before we can do that, there's a few things we'll need to transfer from the old one over to our new back glass. This includes a large metal bracket, the diffuser for the LED flash, and the foam surrounding the camera cutouts. Once everything's in, it's time to remove the plastic protective film covering the adhesive for the new back glass. Attach the metal bracket and install it on the phone after ensuring everything inside the device is nice and clean. After it's been firmly pressed down into place, it's time to remove the two plastic protective films from the device. And we're done. So this is it, a restored Galaxy S21 Ultra. The multicolored back panel looks great, certainly a lot more vibrant than the stealthy black that it was before. But more importantly, it's now a fully functional phone. And despite being a US model, it works perfectly here in Australia and isn't network locked as many US phones are. Like the many Samsungs before it, it was just as repairable, with the exception of the battery, that like always is held in with an extraordinary amount of adhesive, especially since it's basically just wedged inside. And on that note, this has been a huge Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.